This dry demonstration video is a refresher for those trained by a qualified NLB trainer. It does not demonstrate hose connections or plunger lubrication. Do not operate this equipment without prior in-person training. Welcome to NLB's Tech Tips. Today we'll guide you through the steps to operate your new NLB Hydroflex diesel water jetting unit. All NLB high pressure water jetting units are engineered for demanding applications, utilizing a streamlined inline fluid end for efficient operation and easier maintenance. They feature durable plunger pumps that reduce wear and maintenance costs while enhancing operational uptime. NLB's Hydroflex unit features a hydrostatic drive system instead of a traditional PTO drive, offering independent control of engine and pump speeds. Hydroflex units can precisely match pump output to the required flow for your specific job. It doesn't matter if you're running a large tool like the arm and then switch to a smaller tool like a hand lance. The Hydroflex unit will adjust to achieve the exact flow you need. When paired with NLB's eSync wireless technology, compatible with this unit, operators can control the pump remotely from up to 700 feet or 213 meters away, utilizing all eSync enabled accessories while maintaining dry shutoff capabilities. Before starting your Hydroflex unit, it's essential to review the daily maintenance procedures and also check your manual to ensure your job meets all requirements. If everything is in order, let's begin by reviewing the workstation components and pre-operation inspection. The main components that make up the Hydroflex workstation are the programmable controller module for engine and pump control. Next, the hydrostatic drive system. And finally, the pressure reducing bypass valve. Now, let's complete our pre-operation inspection. Step one complete a visual inspection. Look for leaks or any damage to the equipment. Ensure all connections are secure and there are no visible issues. Step two, check your oil levels. Inspect the oil in the power frame crankcase and fill as necessary. Do not overfill. Step three, check your unit position. Verify that the high pressure water jet pump unit is level on the operating surface. Inspect the hydraulic oil tank level and fill as necessary. Step 4. Water Supply Ensure the water supply hose is connected and water is turned on, supplying at the proper pressure. On high pressure hoses, be sure whip checks are installed at all connections. Step 5. Inspect the plunger lubricators. Verify that water is trickling from each cartridge flange. The cartridge flanges have fittings that deposit water directly onto the plungers as the pump operates. Proper lubrication is crucial for the longevity of the packing and plunger life. Step 6. For diesel hydroflex units, check the engine coolant when the engine is at ambient temperature and fill as necessary. Check the engine oil level and verify that it is at proper level and fill as necessary. Check the fuel level in the tank and top off the diesel exhaust fluid tanks if needed. Inspect the air inlet filter for debris or restriction and replace the filter if necessary. Step 7. On the side of the hydraulic reservoir is a level sight glass and temperature gauge for the hydraulic oil. Use the sight glass to confirm oil levels are topped off to ensure optimal performance and reduce friction between moving parts. Follow best practices by keeping track of your runtime and making sure the oil has been changed within the last 1,000 hours of operation. Now, let's start the unit. Start by disconnecting the high pressure system hose from the accessory manifold discharge. Loosen the adjusting screw on the bypass valve if equipped. Turn the ignition key to the on position and wait for the controller to load. After the controller loads, a trigger source must be selected in the controller. To select the trigger source, press button 1 on the controller. This takes you to the NLB engine machine controller screen. Then press button 2 for the setting screen. Use button 5 to cycle through the trigger source options. The options are local, e-sync module, and wireless module. To change the trigger source, the unit must be first turned off and then a new trigger source can be selected. Depending on the selected mode, some features will be disabled in the control panel. After selecting the appropriate trigger source, 
press button 1 to return to the engine machine control screen. This will be the main interface screen. Turn the ignition key to crank position to start the engine. Use the toggle switch to engage the hydrostatic transmission or HST to start the pump. While on the engine machine control screen, press buttons 4 and 5 to decrease or increase the pump RPM. Verify that a steady stream of water is discharging from the high pressure water outlet. If the water pulsates, there may be air pockets in the system or worn valves. For safety, turn off the engine. Connect the water jet accessory to the hose assembly following the accessory manual instructions. Observe the work area to ensure it is clear and safe to operate the water jet accessory. Find the filter restriction indicator for your hydrostatic drive system. If the filter indicator is in the red zone, a filter change is required. It's time to prepare your water jet accessory. Select the nozzles depending on the required pressure and flow. Refer to the operation and maintenance manual for flow per RPM information of the high pressure pump. Engage the HST and slowly engage the trigger on the water jet accessory. Adjust the bypass valve until you reach the desired operating pressure. If the bypass valve becomes fully closed and you are still not at the desired operating pressure, then use the HST controls to increase pump speed until the desired pressure is achieved. The engine will automatically adjust RPM based on the required pump RPM. It will operate at 1500 RPM to start and will increase as needed. The engine cannot be adjusted independently. You are now ready for operation. After completing the warm-up period and all pre-operation checks, Step 1. Ensure all connections are secure and there are no leaks. Step 2. Confirm that the work area is clear and all safety protocols are followed. Step 3. Engage the HST and begin your operation. Congratulations! Your unit is now ready for operation.